This is a little bit more buried than I anticipated. <laughs> yeah, I don't see the uh, wrench here. Oh, there it is. Oh, wow. OK. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Well, 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 what do you think? <laughs> How did we get to this point? Well, first of all, you remember my buddy Sam. He's the guy who built the whole chassis on the F-Rod. You saw him in a couple of episodes where we took that thing to the track. And about six months ago, he sent me a photo of the Ranchero. And I think I saw this photo, and I was like, we'll take it. This is a 1960 Ford Ranchero. It has a solid axle front end conversion, a small block Chevy, and a four speed. It's not really a gasser. The guy who owned it built this thing in the early 70s just as a street machine. But I was asking him, how long has it been sitting here? And he couldn't really nail it down. But I'm getting the impression, let's say 1978. That's how long this has been sitting there. 78 to 2022. <laughs> The pedals ugh, are not working. It turns into a scooter. This is cool. Chuck, the guy who originally built this thing in the early 70s, custom ordered 13-inch slot mags and Bridgestone racing tires to make the front end of the car lower. They've been sitting up on jack stands, so we're hoping it'll hold air. Ooh, that is holding air. Hope it doesn't blow up into my face or other more critical parts. That is a roller. Look at that. Nice. Ooh, dude. Cherry bomb. Yes. Whoa. I just drove 3,000 miles in one of these. It was a little bigger. That's Rick Payway right there. Alarm clock. So far, I have to say the Ranchero is way better than I expected. I can't believe there's no rust in the bed, and the drip rails are all full of dirt and mold, but once you scrape it out, that's not rusty. But here's the big deal. Chuck, who's the guy we bought this from, told us that in the 80s or maybe 90s, it was inside the garage and he was working in the rafters and fell through the windshield. So it's busted out of it. And that's why all this stuff is on here, which is making me concerned that rain's gotten through this over the years and the floor pans are probably shot and maybe even the dash. So let's find out. What is this? Oh, there's a Chevy truck rail under here. You know, it's interesting. You told me this thing was sitting since 78, but I get the impression it wasn't sitting here since then, because that's like, what, a 96 S10 grill? Something like that. And there's the broken windshield, which doesn't even look like it was safety glass. Oh, there's a lot of rat poop. Ooh. Oh, yep. OK. Let's try the air hose on the back and see if they'll hold air. Ooh, I feel it coming up. Oh, it's working. No way. This is the WT Sport 60. This tire is from like 1974. It's a J6014, and it's about to roll out of here. Will it stay? Yeah. Yep. Now we got something. I think we're at the point where we're figuring out how to hook up the winch cable, and we're dragging this out of here. We could push this thing out of here. Oh, no way. Yeah. There we go. We got this. Man, this car is light. OK, you watching the uh, yep. fence behind you and the steering thing, whatever, post office box. Yep. All right, slow her down. Here we go. Ah. Got it. Nice work, gentlemen. It's one of our one of our better days. Yep, bro. <laughs> I wanted to point out a couple things. First of all, notice the Hurst T handle shifter. You can see that it's got the remnants of the old orange felt. You could buy these things wrapped in orange felt so you get a better grip on it. They even sold a matching glove to grip the shifter. It's awesome. Also, check out the Moon accelerator pedal. Good stuff. Oh, and the diamond pleat upholstery. All very 1972. 
All right, this is gonna be gross. See this right here where this paint is peeling off and it's gold underneath? This car is from the era where virtually all the manufacturers took their cheapo lines of vehicles and painted the interior gold, like regardless of the outside color. And uh, our guy went through and painted everything black when he redid the interior. But that's what that is right there. Wow, not only are there like record levels of rat poo, but there's also snail shells stacked up back here. The guy was not snacking on escargot, dude. There's snails. <laughs> yeah. That is disgusting. Ah! Wow. I have never seen that before. All right, moving to vacuum. Ah! Oh, yuck! I wouldn't do your living room with this vacuum cleaner again. No, that's the shop vac. See all of this in the bed? It's 100% rat poop. We're about to pressure wash this thing and reactivate the Hanta virus. Well, we got the vacuum out before we wash the thing. We decided it'd be a good idea to break out the rest of the windshield, which is gonna be a big, sharp mess. And uh, I'm trying to prevent too many shards from getting all over the place by just putting tape all over it. I've been mentally surfing this whole exercise, David, and uh, this may sound crazy to you, but I think it has to be broken out from the inside. Okay. Well, look at it. I trust you. I saw you on the crop duster. Ooh you think what I'm doing is pure folly? No, I think it might save the day. All I want to do is hit this thing with the hammer forever. <laughs> I'm going to stand back so I don't get shards in my eye or my sandal. I would say that would be recommended. Yeah. Comes right out. Look at that. Oh, don't dent the roof. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, nice. What do you think of the tape now? I think it was brilliant, Freiburger. This is a bummer. I was really hoping to just fiddle with this thing and make it run and drive somehow. And I knew it was a gamble with this engine because it's been sitting outside for so long. It's got no carburetor on it. You know the engine's all rusted up inside or something. And uh, Steve did the fan belt trick, so did I. It's not turning over. So it's probably a lost cause, which is a bummer. But I guess it means we can strip the engine and trans out of the thing and sort of make it good again. OK, I got the engine all cleaned off. I got the interior, I hope, desconged. I might want to disinfect it. The thing about pressure washers and oxidized paint like this is I hate putting in what I call pressure washer stripes. If you hold the nozzle too close to the paint, it will leave clean spots and stripe the whole car like a zebra. I hate that. So I'm going to rinse it real quick. If I can find Steve and talk him into helping me, we're going to hand wash the Ranchero. And then I'll hose it off, and we're going to call it a day, let this thing dry off, and we'll be back tomorrow trying to decide what to do about that engine. Well, good morning. The Ranchero is dry. It's actually pretty good. With a Comet wash, it would be great. But that's not happening right now because this morning, Dulcich issued me an ultimatum. I did. What is it? Pull it, Freiburger. I know. Yeah. We're pretty convinced that this engine is garbage, so instead of even messing with it, we're just going to pull the engine and trans out. And if it's pretty good, I guess we can fluff it up and stab it back in. It'll take less time than working on it where it is right now just to yank it, see what we've got. Hood is coming off. All right. I'm taking spark plugs out just for fun. That is a Bosch Platinum plug. That did not exist in 1978, so that's weird. Somebody's put spark plugs in it since then. All right, let me take the shift handle. Wow, everything on this car has been loose. Is this one too? Yeah. This guy just installed this engine and never got it running and never tightened anything. Steve is removing the 13-inch dish mags. The past owner 
put a straight front axle under this thing, which you'll see. Aftermarket solid axle, leaf springs, dropped axle. He had the springs on top of the axle and it sat too high for him. So he moved them under the axle and then had custom 13 inch mags made with 21 inch Bridgestone road racing tires. How vintage is that? And it gives this thing an absolutely terrible stance that I hope to fix. Okay. Okay, coming down? Yeah. There we go. Oh, wow. You got it. Thing out. Out. Ah. Oh, man, if you hit that grill, Freiburger, there would have been hell to pay. I would have been irate. New windshield makes the car grow up quite a bit. Now, the problem is we have acquired a new engine, which is a 283, but unfortunately, I don't have a clutch that's gonna go with it, and that's not even gonna be here tomorrow, which means I have a day tomorrow to make the brakes work on this thing. So I'm gonna start just ripping some stuff apart here, and then we'll dive into having to replumb the entire car's brake system. Whoa, it's like brand new. So I got the brake drum off of what was our mystery front brake system, and looking inside, it's not that much of a mystery at all, because to me, this looks like the very familiar Bendix braking system like you'd find on a muscle car or something like that. But even better, it looks like it's in remarkably good condition. Wheel cylinder looks like it's never been operated. Looking a little bit further, even the brake hoses look okay, but... The whole system is going to have to be replumbed because all of the brake lines are pretty much cut or rusted out and generally unsafe. So, the brakes. That's the whole story and I'm sticking with it. Meet the new Chevy, same as the old Chevy. Not really. We did determine that our 307 that was in the Ranchero was all locked up. And so we went on a shopping frenzy and came up with this. But before I tell you about this engine, let's address the elephant in the room, which is why are we putting a small block Chevy back in our four? Board. Well, here's the thing. Remember that I'm just trying to make this car run and drive. We want to decide if we love it before we commit. This bolts right in. It's a 283 small block Chevy, the second small block Chevy. The first one was a 265 in 1955. The 283 was like an overboard version that came out in 1957, and they ran all the way through 1967. A couple of the ways we know that this is an early motor is, first, it's got the front oil fill like this, but it's an aftermarket intake manifold so anything could have that the weird thing is if you look carefully there is no crank bolt in it at all many of these 283s virtually all of them had no bolt holding the damper to the crank they were just pressed on so that's a little bit scary that that's still that way also look back here this is the remnants of a road draft tube. The early engines didn't use a PCV valve. Instead, there was a tube that ran from here down to the bottom of the car, and the wind passing under the car created a Venturi effect that sucked all the crankcase fumes and just left them on the ground. <laughs> so this thing came with a cam card. It has got a big flat tap and cam in it, uh, 234, 244, I think. It's got this Holly Street Dominator intake and an HEI, and boy, do I hope that we've got time to remove these embarrassing ball-milled billet valve covers. Couple of tech tips. First of all, Small Block Chevy has two different water pump pilot sizes. And the reason you care about that is that it has to mesh with your pulley and also with your fan. This one happens to fit, but here's the other thing. Many aftermarket pumps are drilled with two different bolt patterns for the pulley and for the fan. Here's how I deal with that to make life easy. I pick my pattern and I put one hole right at top dead center. And at that point, I can lean over and look through the grill and line up the pulley right like that. And then I can come in with my fan and get it on in the first shot, like so. Boom, nailed it. Like butter.
Let's see if this thing has any huevos rancheros. Okay. around the edges. 